Hi FlossTube, Stephanie here, Mizoso Crafty. Welcome to my FlossTube video number 73. Today is Saturday, January 18th, 2020. And what I'm going to be doing is a 2019 review, a 2020 preview. And that's about it. And then after, if I still have voice, I may do a separate book tube. <laughs> So it's been a while, about six weeks since I filmed. In the beginning of December, right after my video actually, a few days later, I flew down to Florida and spent a week in the happiest place on earth celebrating Christmas with my family at Disney World. That was incredible. I will insert a picture here. <laughs> we had a really good time. Christmas at Disney World is really special and being there in early December, it wasn't as crowded as it would have been, you know, for the actual holiday. And then we got home and, you know, actual Christmas. <laughs> and then we took a trip and then to visit family. And then we came home on New Year's Day. I was so tired on New Year's Day. I didn't even stitch. I didn't get my New Year's new start. Oh, well. <laughs> In fact, I didn't even feel like starting anything until January 12th. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's talk about an overall review of 2019. So in 2019, I stitched 325 days out of the 365. That's pretty good. It's a little bit more than I stitched the year before. In that time, I got 17 finishes and I made 20 starts. In terms of goals, I did very well in stitch nine. I will insert the graphic here. There was a complete blackout, as you see. As for the year of whips, I also did very well. I got 18 out of 19 finished. A lot of my projects in the year of whips were individual parts of Save the Stitches, so each of those counted as one for Soulful Stitchers, but in terms of like my whip count, I only really counted as one because it's just one piece, Save the Stitches. Anyway, so 18 out of 19 finishes. The one that was not finished was the Fantasy Triptych. And then for the Yao, Year of Whips extra credit, I got seven out of eight finished. And those were all basically like new starts and more um, parts of Save the Stitches. The one that I didn't finish or didn't even start even was The Summer Bird by Leslie Tear. I just didn't get around to starting that. I started some other things instead. I started a lot of things actually. I mean, as I mentioned, I made 20 starts. That was more than I had planned on. and. Towards the end of the year, I kind of went off the rails, stopped focusing on my whips, started starting a bunch of things, and that basically meant that I left the year with more whips than I started with. So that was kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. So let's get into finishes. I'm going to go through in rough chronological order. So the first thing I finished in 2019 was... Let's see if I can fix the charms in this guy. Charm Santa. By Leisure Arts. And this is stitched on 32 count raw gold Belfast. And it has charms and krynik and lots of backstitch and lots of confetti and fractional stitches. And it's not really all that big, but this is about the, as detailed as you can get with cross stitch. It took me, let's see, according to my note, um, 32 days in total. I started it on May 12th, 2017, and I finished on February 14th. Valentine's Day, 2019. Very pleased with that guy. All right, the next thing I finished was The Bird of Happiness by Riolis. This is a kit on pre-printed 14 counts Weigart Ada. And it's done with Anchor Floss. The back stitching is done with Krynik, which is my modification. I love this. It took me a total of 15 days. I started it on May 1st, 2018, and I finished it on April 4th, 2019. It was my birthday finish. Yay! 
I'm very pleased with that. It was my favorite whip for a while. I just love the colors and I love the uh, the joyfulness of it. And I even enjoy the uh, the fabric, even though I'm not a, you know, a huge fan of Sitchi and Ada. I just think this is beautiful, the way it was printed and everything. I love how the bird is floating up into the light. All right. The next finish I want to share is Winnie the Pooh 2 by MCG Textiles, extensively converted by me. New fabric, new floss, and more backstitch and stuff. <laughs> and yeah, so here's Winnie the Pooh, and this is on 28 Count Monaco, DMC conversion as I mentioned. French knots galore. And there, and here's Eeyore and Rabbit and Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Kanga and her little boy Roo and the badger down there. And what's going on in this um, scene is that Pooh sees the honey up in the tree but he can't reach it so Christopher Robin gives him the balloon to float up and reach it. And there's Al. So this piece definitely took a while. It took a total of 66 days. I started it April 19th, 2017 and finished May 23rd, 2019. So very pleased with that. I recently purchased a uh, frame for it, so hopefully I'll get it framed this year. All right, the next finish is Celtic Winter by Lavender and Lace. This is stitched on 28 pounds pearl gray cashel linen. And the pattern is, yeah, Lavender Lace. And I did an extensive conversion on it with the Cape Sharp by Natalie. And I chose my own colors and my own beads and did more back stitching on it. And I did my own sort of uh, thing for the fluffy trim. I love her. She's actually my favorite Celtic lady after all the modification. It doesn't really bear that much resemblance to the original pattern, but uh, I love it. That took 28 days in total. I started it on January 24th, 2019 and finished May 26, 2019. All right, the next thing I want to share is a big one. <laughs> This is the Mill Hill Village by, well, Mill Hill. Mill Hill Christmas Village kits, 12 of them, compiled and stitched in a village by me with a border that I found. Uh, here we go. Yep, there it is in all its glory. So there's the tree farm, the toy shop, the bookstore, the needlework shop, the apothecary, the general store, the St. Nicholas Cathedral, the village bakery, the Queen Anne house, the palace theater, the post office, and the firehouse. This is just drawn 28 count Jobelin in the stormy gray hand dyed colorway, I think, by Witchell. And the ones I did last year were basically the bottom row, the Queen Anne House, the Palace Theater, the Post Office, and the Firehouse, and then also this one up here, I finished it off the uh, Needle Workshop with the beads and the buttons. Yep, and the border is done in Krynik. Chronic number four, grade 032. This was a very special project. I started it in 1 1 2017, so January 22nd, 2017. I finished it July 3rd, 2019. So two and a half years. And it took a total of 79 days to stitch. Very proud of that. I just love it. So sparkling. And all the buttons and the beads and <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'd love to do a Halloween version, but the kit selection that Mill Hill has is not as deep for Halloween as it is for Christmas. So the next thing I want to share is a Joan Elliott pattern. This is called Joyful Teddy. 
and it was published in a magazine. I got the high use the magazine version. You can also get a chart pack from Jane Elliott directly. So this is stitched on 32 count white opal Belfast. You see the sparkle. <laughs> There's also some Krynic in this, gold Krynic, silver Krynic. I personalized it for my son at the bottom. It says for Oliver. This was also a favorite whip for a while. Uh, I just think it is adorable with the colors and the cuteness and the birds and the holly leaves, just everything about it is just so sweet. I also got a frame for that one. So I need to frame that as well. All right, the next thing I wanna share is a Halloween-y sort of finish. Well, sort of. A Harry Potter-ish kind of finish. <laughs> so this is Ginny Weasley, the one in the green with the Gryffindor scarf holding her little pygmy puff. Arnold, she is facing Fleury Delacour, who I stitched a few years ago. So as for Ginny, I started her on June the 9th of 2019, and I finished her on... September 7th. So she took a total of eight days in all. And the Pygmy Puff is my creation. I charted that and I did a bee conversion on her. I did a scarf conversion. Did a hair conversion. Yep, so it's Ginny and Fleur. And I think this piece tells a little story. It shows their personalities and I love it. I'm looking forward to stitching more Harry Potter characters. All right, the next one is Hobbit Menu, or sorry, Eleven Seeds by Fiddlesticks AU. This is stitched on, oh sorry, uh, Ginny and Fleur, that's the back of it. <laughs> They're stitched on 32 Gallant Lugana in the NYX colorway by Under the Sea Fabrics. Okay, right, this one, Eleven Seeds, or Hobbit Menu as I refer to it, by Fiddlesticks AU is stitched on 28 count cashel in the Salem colorway by Color and Cotton, and I did a color conversion on it, partial. The top half is as charted, the bottom half is mine. <laughs> so I love this. I also have a frame for this one, so expect to see that frame pretty soon here. All right, my next finish was. Oh yeah, so as for 11 C's, I started it on September 14th and I finished it on October 5th. It took a total of four days to stitch and they were long stitchy days while I was playing dodgeball with semi-sane stitchers. But it really, it didn't take all that long to stitch because it's, you know, just the words and single color. So not a big deal. Okay, the next finish I want to share is a Super small one. It is a freebie from Nessie Lynn. Let your light shine, rainbow. It's just on 28 count cashel in the Haven colorway by Picture This Plus. It only took a few days. Uh, let's see. I started it on June 21st. I finished it on June 22nd. It took a day and a half. And I did do a color conversion on it because I started the pattern is sort of in pastel colors and they didn't really show up very well on this fabric. So I chose my own. <laughs> and that was a fun little piece. And then one of my really big finishes. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'm back. So one of my big finishes from this year was Spooky House by X's and O's Designs. This is stitched on 32 count thunderstorm Belfast. And it took a while, about um, 60 days over a couple years. So I started it on January 1st, 2018, and I finished October 18th, 2019. So almost two years. And I found this frame for it at Michael's. I made one modification to it. Instead of stitching the moon in Krynik, I used Petite Treasure Braid. And I love it. I think it is very special, <laughs> very cool haunted house pattern. The next one I wanna share is 
Cauldron Cleaner by Hands On Designs. This is stitched on 32 count antique white Belfast, and it's done with some classic Colorworks floss and some Weeks Dye Works and some Crime Ink. And this little guy is missing his the end of his tail, so I guess it's not completely technically finished, but whatever. I'm counting it as a finish. So that I started on. October 20th and I finished on November 9th of 2019. It took me three days to stitch. Three kind of long days. I mean this is like an ornament size but it's kind of large for an ornament so yes. All right we're almost done with the finishes. <laughs> okay so this one is the Gingerbread Boy by Medina Originals from the Just Cross Stitch 2019 magazine. This is stitched on 28 count white opalescent cashel. It took me three days to stitch. I started it on November 24th. I finished it. No, I'm sorry. It took me one day to stitch. Yeah. <laughs> I started it on November 24th. I finished on December 7th and it was like partial days, you know, like an hour or two, an hour there, whatever. It added up to one day <laughs> in my rough calculation. And then my last finish, last but not least, is this one. The Winter White Sleigh by Fireside Originals, also in that Just Cross Stitch 2019 ornament magazine. This is stitched on 32 count Belfast in the Ruby Wine colorway with B5200 floss and Krynik 001 HL, high luster silver. So. It, the, the sleigh is in the white, and then all the metallic bits and the back stitching and everything is in the silver. That I started on November 24th. I finished it on November 25th. It took a day. <laughs> Two partial days. All right, so that was it for my finishes. I'm pretty pleased with that. It would have been, I had some finished plans to finish some more things in December, but I just didn't get around to it because I didn't have a stitchy time in December between my traveling and holiday celebrations and stuff like that. So, oh well, it is what it is, you know. Stitching weights. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. All right, let's get into my whips now. So I have quite a few. <laughs> I ended the year with 12, with 10 whips, and I started two things in this year, 2020, so I have 12. Shall we start with the oldest one, I guess? Hang on a sec. Okay, this is Teresa Wensler Fantasy Triptych. It's stitched on 25 count Monaco in antique white, and I have worked on it, I worked on it 36 days last year. I started it, it was my new year new start, I started it on January 3rd. I've given it two days so far this year. What I've been working on is this block here, the night block. I've given it 600 stitches over the past couple days and I'm still not done with the page yet. <laughs> There's just a little bit more to go. It's coming along. It'll look really awesome I think when it's back stitched, but uh, I'm not quite ready to do that yet, so. Fantasy Triptych by Teresa Wensler. I started in the middle with the castle panel and then I worked to the left and I finished off this panel with the maiden. Everything except for her skin. I just figured I would do that all at once later on. I did all, most of the back stitching on the middle panel of the castle. It's basically just like trees and a little bit of water reflection in the lake and stuff or the moat or whatever it is. And I did some of the back stitching on the, the rocky cliff right next to the castle. I didn't do any back stitching on the castle itself. That's just, you know, lines basically. It that won't be difficult to do. And I I haven't back stitched anything on the girl either. So I think what I may do is just well my plan is basically to work, once I finish this guy, this page here, I'm going to work up and do the top half of the night panel, and then I'll probably backstitch the whole night panel. And then just keep on working over to the left and doing, you know, more stitching and backstitching. My plan is to finish it this year. I did do about half of it last year, and 
the pattern is not as densely stitched on the top half. So that's something. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully I can give it another 35 days or so and get it finished this year. That is one of my year whips, of course. And one of my whip go projects. So year whips is with Soho Stitchers, Melanie, and it's starting today. <laughs> so if you want to participate, <laughs> get your album up on her Facebook group. Um, whip go is... Well, it's kind of similar, but there's like a bingo model to it. So I will insert a copy of my Wipco board right here. <laughs> okay, technical difficulty. <laughs> All right, the next whip I want to share is Save the Stitches by Elizabeth Almond. This is Blackwork Journey. This is a 3D pattern in 24 parts that you can get. <laughs> and it's just drawn. 25 count Monaco in the vintage smoky white, I think it is. Or vintage smoky gray, I can't remember, sorry. <laughs> but I gave this 27 days last year plus two days this year to do this one. Oops. Forgive me, it's been a while since I filmed. I'm a little bit out of practice yet. Okay, so this one down here, um, over here. So that is part 13. And it is all done except for the metallics. That took a few days to stitch, like two days. And it was, it was all right. Some of the blocks, like this one was really easy. This one was kind of a pain. So, yeah. Also, planning to finish this this year. It shouldn't be that difficult. I mean, I did half of it last year. I'll do half of it this year. <laughs> and for Year of Whips, it counts as several different projects, of course, because each part counts as a separate whip. All right. The next whip I'm going to share is the Spring Bell Pole by Stony Creek. This is to draw an 18 count and cloth. And it's very long, <laughs> the bell pole. So S for sing, P for praise, R for renew, I for inspire, N for, I think it's nurture, I can't remember, and then G for. I don't know, growth maybe? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, it's <laughs> so this is one 18 count and club, 100% cotton. I'm using a conversion color for the big letters that is Water Lily's Budding Leaf Silk Floss, and I love it. It called for like weeks guacamole, and I don't really like that color very much. So, I mean, I think it's a fine color, just not for spring. So this one got 27 days last year, and it's about, well, it's four, six done. So it's like, you know, 70% done or something. So it's, well, plus I've done some more than, but I will say 75, 80% done. It's, it's definitely coming along. I'm actually hoping that I can finish this by April, because I started it in April last year. So I'm hoping to make it a birthday finish. All right, the next one is Twilight Bridge by Dimensions. And this one is a big old mess with lots of part threads. So you'll have to uh, deal. <laughs> so here it is. This is stitched on 18 count Ada that came with the kit in a white, creamy white color. It is a fine fabric to stitch on. It's one of their older kits, so maybe they used a higher quality fabric, you know, some years ago, I don't know. Yeah, so I started this one in May and I gave it 35 days and it is about half done, maybe, maybe more than that. Uh, yeah, probably more than half done. 
one, one page is complete, this page is complete, and then these two pages are mostly complete, and then this page is just barely started. Yeah, so the whole thing is like four pages. And I'm using this for the Full Coverage Fanatics 20 in 2020 event. So basically it's like 20,000 stitches on one project, and I think that'll be enough to finish because the full stitch count on this is like 50K, and in terms of the stitch count for full coverage and everything, it won't, a lot of it is half cross, so it would, you know, it wouldn't, uh, two stitches would count for one. So I think 20 might actually be enough to finish it. We shall see. Maybe only like 15 or something to finish, or I don't know. We'll see. And that counts as three whips for the, the year of whips because it's three pages, three full coverage pages. The next one I want to share is Gingerbread Grove by Blend and Place. So I started this in July, July 17th, and I worked on it um, 15 days plus one day this year, so a total of 16 days so far. It's on 28 count Haven Castle, and it's definitely coming along. The thing that I worked on most recently is this one over here. Uh, yep, this guy. And then there's going to be two little like gingerbread people down here, and maybe another reindeer and some another tree or something. I'm not really sure. So. It's definitely coming along, but it needs Krynik to be put in throughout. There is already a little bit of Krynik. Like you can see the, the green Krynik in there. And there's some red Krynik like on the rooftop. But yeah, it calls for these particular colors of Krynik that I just have not been able to track down. I've ordered them and I've looked at not one, not two, but three different LNSs in three different states. <laughs> I've not been able to find them. So, I am weighing my options. I might just have to like do some substitution or something. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, anyway, that is definitely a finished goal. And I don't think it'll take too much longer. Maybe like another like 10 days or so. All right. The next book I want to share is almost a finish. It's practically a finish. It is Prancer by Nora Corbett. And it was, it's right here, it's stitched on um, 32 count pewter opalescent uh, Belfast by Picture This Plus, and it is pretty much done. I gave it seven days in total, six days last year, one day this year after starting it on August 26th. And the only thing missing at this point is the reindeer's tail, which needs to be done a whisper, which I don't have any in my stash, so I need to obtain that, and I have to sew the treasures on as well. So I'm probably just going to order some stuff and one, two, three, or whatever, and then do that at some point before the month ends. <laughs> I have a few things that I have, more things that I want to start in January. And since I'm already at 12 whips right now, I really don't want to start anything else until I finish something. All right, moving on. My next whip is Fairy of the Rainbow by Joan Elliott. This is stitched on 32 count blue diamonds Belfast by Vintage Silk Weaver. And here it is with tons of part thread, sorry. Yeah. A little better. Okay, so this is by Joan Elliott. As I mentioned, I'll insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like here. I started this lady on October 17th, and I've given her eight days so far. They were some crazy long stitchy days as part of the Stitcher Games with Semi Sane Stitchers last November. I won't be doing that again. <laughs> no more crazy long stitchy days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those were days where I would, you know, break out like thousands of stitches like overnight and I'm just, I'm not doing that anymore. It's 
ridiculous. It's not good for my body. And it just takes a lot of the joy out of the hobby when you're trying to like bang out thousands of stitches over a day, you know, <laughs> not for me. Anyway, I really do enjoy working on this piece though. It's a beautiful, you know, rainbow assortment of colors because she's the rainbow fairy, of course. And her bodice is going to be green, which I'm excited about because green is my favorite color. As for the bottom, it's, I mean, it's coming along, obviously, but there's a lot of filling that needs to be done with some of the highlight colors, which are like yellows and that kind of thing. And I have to fill in this bit up here with some purple DMC that I ran out of at the time. I think I've since replenished it, though, and I think I may need to do some more on this ribbon here to finish off the ribbon. The next thing I want to share is... Batty Belinda by Brooks Books. So here she is. I started her on October 29th. No, sorry, October 25th. And I've given her, I gave her two days last year, one day this year, so three days so far. And she stitched on 14 count brown perforated paper with lots of black crinic. <laughs> And lots of colors in her. She's pretty fiddly for a small project, I have to say. So, yeah, she's coming along. My plan is to finish her, you know, basically one more day. I have to do a little bit of fill in in her skirt and everything, and a little bit of fill in on her skin, and then basically do the beading. And there's not too much beading. I mean, it's like, well, how much could there be? She's like four inches tall, right? <laughs> She's part of a series. There's Batty Belinda, that's her, and then there's P Pumpkin Penelope or something, and that's like three of them, so maybe I'll do all three. I certainly have enough perforated paper knocking around because I have all this perforated paper from the Mill Hill series. I didn't actually use the paper because I stitched the village on the fabric, so I can use the paper for other things. Alright, the next thing I want to share is we do Harry Potter by Stitch Area or an Etsy. So this one, oops, it's coming off the scroll. Okay, so this is stitched on 28 count antique smoky white casual with water lilies, silk floss, dark shadows. It says, in this house, we believe in magic. We cast spells and free house elves. We solemnly swear we are up to no good. We use our brooms for flying, not sweeping. We board the Hogwarts Express at platform nine and three quarters. We don't forget to live, and we pity those who live without love. We know it's a beautiful place to be with friends. We find happiness by turning on the light. We remember that the ones we love never really leave. We know that we all have magic inside of us. Because in this house... We do Harry Potter. So there's one more line to do, and then there's like little footprints going up on each side, like from the narrator's map. And I have to do a little bit of work up here on the Deathly Hallows symbol. I need to add like back stitching to it or something just to like make it look less blocky, I think. So this was started in October 29th, and I thought it would be a quick stitch. No, not really. <laughs> it's 10 days so far, 10 days last year, three days this year, so 13 days so far. I think it'll probably take another one or two days more to finish it. It's just, the fabric is very thin, so I have to be kind of careful about where I place thread. And then even when I'm done, I think what I'm gonna have to do is just stick little bits of muslin between where I carried the thread <laughs> on the back. Yeah. So this is the uh, toy ornament from Better Homes and Gardens. Um, one of their Christmas books. If you're interested, just let me know in a comment and I'll give you the title. So this is just on 28 count white cashel with like 10 billion DMC colors. Well, not really, but like maybe 20, which is a lot for something this small. <laughs> There's like fractional stitches in this, back stitching in several different colors. There's even some beads. So at this point, it's almost done. What I need to do is, well, fill in the missing DMC, finish the back stitch, and do the beading.
and personalize it for my son. This one is going to be backdated, I think, for like the year he was two, maybe. Because I did one for him when he was one, and then I didn't do one for years two or three, and then I did four or five. Yeah, so I'm playing catch up. I've given this three days so far, two days last year, one day this year, and I'm looking forward to finishing it probably like next month or something. I'm trying to kind of try to space out my finishes because, it, you know, just for trim stash and stuff like that. So it's kind of nice to space out your finishes, I think. <laughs> All right, and then I have the two new starts. I will show you the one that's on the, the frame first. Okay, this is heavy. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is Rapunzel by Joan Elliott, stitched on 32 count Belfast in the Heather color wave. I picture this plus. I started in the middle with her dress and I'm working on the blue like drape of her dress and also her long braid that's coming down to the floor. So her waist is up here and this is the, the bottom of her skirt and stuff. So it's coming along. It has like 500 or 600 stitches in it so far. And I am looking forward to working on it more this week because the next few days really because it was chosen for Choose My Whip and Send Me Sane Stitchers. So I need to do like another 500 stitches on it, which would be great because I'll have a thousand and I'll feel like I got a decent start. <laughs> and this is actually pretty easy to stitch. Like it goes, you know, pretty fast. It's just like chunks of color as you can kind of see how I'm stitching it across country. I just go color by color and then I fill in, start with the darkest ones or start with the ones that's easy, easier to read on the chart and then just kind of like fill in. So this one, I'm also doing it for the Once Upon a Fairy Tale Sal with Semi Stain, or that, whatever it's called, I can't remember. The idea is to start something in January and finish it by the end of June. And I've given Rapunzel two days so far, so <laughs> I'll be working on her a lot, <laughs> I guess. And that's not a problem. I love working on her. I wanted I wanted to start Rapunzel for a very long time, and I kept on, you know, buying fabrics for her, or at least ordering fabrics online, and then not being satisfied with them. And finally, I got this one, the Heather, and I think it's perfect. For this pattern, you need something that is going to sort of suffice as castle, stone castle walls, and also something that conceivably could be sky, so... I think this kind of does the trick, the purpley gray with the buttery yellow and white and stuff. So it definitely has like a vintagey kind of appearance to it. And I love it. The other thing I started, if you can even call it a start, it's a very modest start. I did like 25 stitches or something. I'll insert a uh, photograph of the pattern. It's a uh, Toy Story 2 cast by Debbie Minton, and I'm using a piece of 28 count cashel in the La Pie Lazuli colorway from Silk Weaver. And I started with Buzz's elbow, and I got 20 some stitches. <laughs> Big whoop, huh? But I don't even know why I bothered. I had a lot of other things going on that day, so I'm counting it as one day anyway, because <laughs> that is all I stitched on that particular day. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the other things that I plan to start this year. I'll be back in a minute. Hello again, I'm back after running around looking for stuff. <laughs> I was not able to put my hands on one of the things I plan to start, but I can just insert a picture. <laughs> so I do plan to continue with the Scary Apothecary series. I want to start the Skeleton Polish one. The pattern looks like this. I found every single other chart in the series except for that one, and I know I have it somewhere, so... I just have to look. That one, I'm not sure when I'll start it. It is part of the year of whips, so I want to start it at some point, certainly, and probably around, you know, the October time frame. But I'm not in any rush. 
One thing I am kind of in a rush to start is, okay. so the next thing that I'm likely going to start as soon as I finish the uh, We Do Harry Potter piece is this one. Harvest Witch from Stony Creek, book 349, Ghostly Treats. This is some old stash. It is the very first line in my spreadsheet. It was published in 2004. I plan to stitch it on this fabric here, which is from my old Soul Weaver Fabric of the Month stash. This is probably like a good, almost 20 years old now. <laughs> so, this is opalescent Belfast in the Intrigue colorway. It's a really nice bluey purple. I think everything will pop on there, like the moon and the dress and everything. I might need to do some floss sauces. Yeah, the only thing I'm concerned about is the dress. I have to make sure those colors pop, but I can always change up the colors a little bit if necessary. And I need to start this, you know, very soon here because one of the extra credits this month in the School Magical Stitches is to stitch on something with a moon, and none of my current whips have moons, so that one obviously does. <laughs> And then the other thing that I may start this month, if I finish, well, let's be more optimistic, when I finish Prancer is the Mirabilia Cathedral Wood Scottis. My husband asked me to stitch this for him, and I think it's been far too long since I have stitched a full-size mirror, so yeah, <laughs> this is the fabric I have for her. It is Silk Weaver Cashel Ametrine. And it is a lovely, like, greenish, purple, woody, muddy sort of fabric. I think it'll be perfect for her. Here is the bead pack. I actually picked the fabric after seeing the beads. The beads look good on the fabric. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but kind of, yeah. Yeah, I think it'll work out really well for her, and I'm looking forward to starting her. Another project that I plan to stitch this year is Comet by Nora Corbett. I will insert a pattern photo here, and I will stitch it on this fabric. This is Crystal Pewter Belfast by Picture This Plus. It's the same fabric that I've used for all the reindeer, so I have another few more to do. You can see I cut out a quarter of it. That was used for Prancer. <laughs> so I have three more quarters. Three more reindeer. Comet, Cupid, and Vixen. I don't think I'll get to all three of them this year, but at least one. <laughs> okay, so there are a couple more projects that I have as Year of Whips pieces that I don't actually have in my stash yet. I will insert pictures. So one of them is the Lemonade Freebie from Sapphire Mountain Handcraft. I'll insert a picture here, and I'm planning to stitch it on that fabric. And another one is the American Eagle Ornament by Mel Hill. I will insert a picture right here. And it's not part of the Year of Whips, but I'm thinking about doing a snowman ornament for my son because he's a big fan of Olaf. I'll insert a picture of that here. <laughs> and I guess that's about it for the things I plan to start. Um, I will probably start a few ornaments and stuff like that along the line, but you know, nothing. I don't have any other big things to start. I did start a lot of big things last year, like Save the Stitches and Teresa Wentzel Fantasy Triptych, so. <laughs> It'll be good to work on those and try to finish them up this year and get my whip count down back to the eight, you know, range around there, which I prefer. So, like I said, I'm at 12 right now, which is not a little bit. I mean, it's okay, that's okay for me. It's comfortable, but I prefer to be just a little lower. I guess briefly I can mention Citrum Stash. The Citrum Stash has gotten very popular as of late. It's part of the Year of Whips now, and that if you're doing Year of Whips, you must join Citrum Stash, and you must participate in the challenge, and finish both halves of the year in the black or the green, basically in the positive. <laughs> so, good luck, everybody. <laughs> Me, myself, I'm not doing too great with, from, with Citrum Stash uh, in January so far, but I do have a few finishes on deck, so we'll see. <laughs> All right.
that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. <laughs> Hit that little uh, button if you uh, if you're not a subscriber. I'm hoping to film a lot more in 2020. Uh, 2019 just was not the greatest uh, <laughs> floss tube filming year, but. I'm going to try to turn over a new leaf and get myself in front of the camera a lot more often. All right, everyone. Be well, be happy, be kind. Ta-ta.